ahead with prayers. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given to us. And we thank you for the opportunities that you also give us here in Wittown. We thank you, Father, that you have entrusted us with the leadership here in this city. And we just pray that you would continue to guide, direct, and lead us that we may do what's right here in the city of Wittown. We ask you to go with us now throughout this night, throughout this meeting. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 Okay, on the work session tonight, uh, Councilman Gill has asked for some discussion items, um, demolition of blighted properties, and then let's just take them one by one, Councilman, if you will, and we'll go with the first one, which is the demolition of, of blighted properties. Right, and as, thank you, as you, as you guys know, we've had several uh, properties in District 2 that has been on the list and some have been on the list for a number of years that was scheduled to be um, demoed. And of course, we have some legal um, issues that we have to straighten out and report within the last several months. We've been able to address at least three of those particular properties. And from my understanding, out of the three that have been demoed, at least one, one of those particular landowners have came back and paid uh, the lien because the city went ahead and initiated the, the demolition. So what I want to do is, is actually see where we were in terms of continuing that process. Um, and I know we have somewhat of a budget. I talked with um, uh, Julie about it, but I want to see since at least one of those persons have paid to have that, have her lien taken care of, I want to see if we can still continue the process of demo of these properties that's in district, primarily in district two, the ones I'm concerned about. I talked with Jason, I didn't see him here, but he, Jason's not here. Yeah, but uh, certainly there's a list that we have that are the homes that are prioritized. And so we, we, did, we did with the ones that were in the most horrible condition initially, and we still have some that is still pretty bad uh, disrepair that is clearly uh, on the list for demo. So I want to see what the process would be to continue that, continue what we're doing. Okay, I, I prepared this for us tonight to give us an update from 2009 to 2012 on this list and then on this list here gives us from two from 2013 to 15 where we are now the properties that have been demolished uh, others that are still in the works uh, as far as the balance i did uh, talk with julie today about that julie tell us what the balance is in the demolition account well, actually, uh, we're up at 133% of budget. Uh, the budget, uh, the budget was uh, 5,000, and we're at 6,657. And that is with payback of. Um, and that is including the payback of the. Um, of, I think it was Miss Bowman. That was every pay. No kidding. Um, what we would have to do if there are other items, I think, in there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think what we would need to do if, if the council deemed it necessary to to move forward, then that money would have to come out of general fund in order to boost up this uh, this line out. Okay. And so, if, if I could, ask, I don't know the exact dollar amount per house at the last demo. But what would be was it was it the same across the board for each individual house? No, it wasn't, and I, I can't I cannot tell you because I do not know. <laughs> so we did three, like that is Well, actually, from thirteen, we've got one, two, three, four on this front page. Uh, I see five. I don't know how that reads. First, first we actually did that so. The, one on the first one he did is actually yeah. does what people get rid of himself, but then the others we have actually been a part of that. Mm -hmm. There was one that came out of there that wasn't actually taken out of the fund because the property owner agreed to tear it down, and we just arranged it with the demolition people. We didn't actually spend money on that. So it's only those three that came out. But uh, they've averaged anywhere from like I said, twenty six to, to five thousand dollars depending on where we can house work for years. And at one time we had a fifty thousand uh, dollar 
stabilization budget. But uh, it, it wasn't replenished when, the, when they were payback <coughs> when they had me moving back into the fund. So it had gotten down to, to that amount. And that kind of gets to really the crux of that. And based on what I see, I think 5000 is going to be a little low to do. Even if we were doing three, we wouldn't be able to do three or five thousand. So I know a deficit <coughs> has funding for demolition, but I want to check and see what our city budget was first and foremost before we apply for any additional funding to our debt to see if we can continue to really address it because it seems as though most of the, the properties or the blight are going to be in district two, as you know. So we want to try to address that and see what the city's feeling for for either possibly increasing the budget some, and I didn't set a dollar amount, I don't know what that dollar amount should be, or either applying for some additional grant money through a DECA to try to help us. Get is the DECA grant going to be a CDBG grant? It's, it's one of those grants that is not, it, it wouldn't affect any anything else we have hold of them? Exactly, so it's one of those grants that <coughs> wouldn't count against us if we apply for them. All right, um, I, I, I don't know the wishes of the council, but I, I think if we had something in building uh, that was being processed and we got to the point uh, that we could move forward on it. Uh, it does have to pass. That the council would take action on it to supply the debt. It doesn't mean the program has to stop dead at its tracks until we get into the next budget. And there's, you know, there is a notice procedure. There's, there's quite a few steps you have to go to before you actually approve the demolition itself. Okay, right. So you can still be working on several of those projects, and it, it, it's going to take you probably six days at least. To so get, we pretty much be in the next budget. Yeah, you'd almost be in the next budget year. So I mean, you could start on some of those, some of the worst ones you have. And by the time we get to where we have to actually spend the money for the demolition, it's going to be right close to it in the next budget year. So we don't want the process to stop. We want the process. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. You that's that's what I'm, that's my hope that we continue on because we've got this list of 16, and I know at least five have been completed, but it looks like 16, sorry, 18 <coughs> projects here that are in that are on the list. So I certainly want to continue to focus on the ones that are that are without question need to be done. All right. All right, and the next item. Um, would be signage in the city parks referencing hours of operation. Um, Regina, do you want to speak to that? If I recall correctly, we, we passed an ordinance that addressed two of the parks back in November. Right. Um, and basically, it said that no one should be in the park um, after dusk yes. before dawn. That was called what the signage should read. Now, Gold Star and some of these other ones are actually leased out or reserved. I should say, and they're under a contract for reservations. And so they are being used at, sometimes at nights. And so um, the signage would need to read a little bit different for those. You know, I mean, you can still put the dust and dawn kind of thing, except where otherwise permitted. Because you're going to get a permit and you're going to be there otherwise. So you can just tweak it a little bit if you want to do it that way. Those two parts could carry the reference number of the order, right? Right, of the, uh, the ordinance we already passed. And I, I have talked with, with Tex, and I know he's been on the weather. Um, but I certainly want us to go ahead and aggressively move forward because at this point, we still, at least within the level, or any of the city parks, we still don't have the, the, the hours of operations there. So if anything were to go on in any, from any legal standpoint, we don't have hours of operation, we can't hold anyone accountable until what time they're supposed to be out in the park or whatever, because that right now, there's still no hours of operations there. So that's something that we'll have to work on. Do that. So we say it's not enforceable even if we have an hour. Let's just say someone is there beyond the hour that we posted. And if what well, and, and just bring it to what really brought my attention to this, there's a, there's one of the residents whose home is right there, I guess in in front of the park, and he told me that there was um, he could look out his window and see some people out there around two o'clock in the morning, and I also heard some possible some gunshots or whatever, and he was really concerned about that. And he asked me, what are the hours of operation here? And I said, well, they're not posted. I don't know what they are to be honest with you. So that's what started the whole process. But what I'm asking as a city, if we post hours of operation, doesn't that kind of, free? number one, it gives them clear time for what time you should be here and what time you should not be out here. After that, does, does that give us the authority with the policemen to say, hey, you're not supposed to be here at that time. And right now, we don't have that. It's in the ordinance, but the ordinance says we'll have a sign. So we don't have a sign yet. So to really to make it enforceable, we have to we need to do the signage. We can post uh, we can go ahead and 
post into two parts then. It's the same signage. Right. And that would be the that other crossing part and the other part. part, which is the metal roof and, and uh, the level. Okay. That's, that's the I think that will resolve okay. what I'm concerned about. Now, dust to dawn, uh, you, you winter and summer months is going to change your timing, or you want to put a certain time. I think the ordinance. We can go back. I think it says dust to dawn. Okay. We'll go back and do whatever you want. And then the next item is uh, work on the football fields, and that is the youth fields uh, at the uh, MLK. Right. So, of course, you know, as we discussed, I and mean, as we passed um, the last, well, sorry, not passed, we brought it up, we did pass uh, the, the pay, payment for the activity we were agreeing that we would have uh, Cook Studios to do a architectural rendering to give us a conceptual drawing of what the MLK property would look like joining the new sports complex. And since that time, I was unaware, I was aware, and I have talked to Coach Davidson, but I was aware that some construction, I say construction, but demolition had started in terms of moving the press box. So my concern was that we were starting to do something without a clear blueprint or specifications of number one, what the field look, would look like, what the field would call for from a little league uh, sports perspective, and also what it would look like in terms of how the transition would happen from the MLK side to the new sports complex side. And my ultimate concern is I've said <coughs> all along that I want to make sure that this is something that looks all the same, it looks continuous, it doesn't look like you got one part with new fixtures and so forth, and another part you have substandard or used um, remnants, if you will, of what's existing. So that's the thing that I want to make sure that we were all on the same page and making sure that. We have a strategic plan of what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and hopefully what it's all going to look like once, once it's finalized. Because I certainly want to make sure that when people come to, the, whether they come to the play baseball or football, I'm hoping that it all looks the same. It's, it, there's no difference in terms of, well, it seems like a little bit more care was given to one side versus the other side. And, and Mayor, we talked about it this morning, and hopefully we got you on the same page with it. But I want to make sure that as Council and everybody else understand that we're kind of going to try to make sure that this is all done and it all complements each other. So there's not a distinguish between the two because of where they're geographically located. And I think that's exactly where we are. Uh, Coach Dixon can speak to that, but we were. Uh, what, what has been done so far is pretty much a press box that was in bad shape that actually had twisted on the foundation. Over there was dangerous about to fall, so the decision was made to go ahead and take it out and get it out of the way because it wasn't usable then. And then there were a couple of uh, concrete slabs there, pads that were going to need to be removed also. Um, to tie it in from one uh, complex to the next, and I, I, again, I've said this before and I say it again tonight. That is the prettiest piece of property we own in the city, that this city owns. When you stand up there on that hill and look down through there, that's beautiful property. Um, we uh, had an opportunity, a uh, coach in Texas had dealt with Alabama Power Company because the poles were set up for baseball. It wouldn't be conducive for football. So they agreed that no charge to us that they would relocate, uh, set the poles like they should be uh, set, and they had some new poles that they were going to let us have, give us during this process. So there's no money had been spent in that. Uh, even the power company had agreed, told us to Greer, that the tree line in there between the two, we certainly want to save the trees that are in there, but they're going to have to be limbed up because they're they're down so close to the ground. And uh, they have even said they would come back and, and limb these up, uh, you know, for us. Uh, I think it's going to be beautiful once it is uh, laid out. Coach went over there with his field, with his wheel. He's got his wheel that he pushes and, and did the measuring and everything. He came back and tell us, told us that, hey, this will work. Uh, Councilman Gill and Councilman Gant had and brought this to our attention roughly three years ago, that that would be a good place for a, a youth football field. So 
we haven't done anything as far as construction. We've done some deconstruction, uh, which was going to have to be done anyhow. Uh, stretching the length of the field to where you could get a 100-yard football field with, with your end zones, which would be 120 that you would wind up with. And I believe it's 63 yards wide. Is that correct, Coach? No, it's less than that. We're going to try to make it wide enough for soccer. Also. Yeah. We're going to have plenty of room there to do what we want to do. So it's not going to be cramped. It's not going to look like it's just something stuck in. Even had meetings Coach has had with the high school football coach, uh, input, uh, suggestions of how we can work together uh, on, on some of these projects. And uh, I think we've made a lot of headway with that. Softball coach was in today meeting with Coach, and I think we're making headway there also. So. Um, I, I don't think we have done anything since this council has been here that that is ugly, uh, doesn't present itself well, such as the fire truck sitting in front of the fire station over there, such as the flower beds throughout town, such as the baskets. All the things that we've done, and I think that that our people, our health, our departments, folks, we got the best people in the world. We got some talented, talented people working for us. And, and they take this serious. So I, I think the rendering that you're talking about would be great to have because if somebody can see it in a picture, then that, that's something totally different than trying to explain to a high school. But I, I think with the uh, design, once uh, that property is sitting there, it would even be easier to design because uh, you go over and get your measurements, you know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, we certainly have the dirt over there that, uh, that we can level up and fix. And uh, the ones of you that, uh, who, who's here from youth football? Look over there. You from youth football? Uh, you didn't raise your hand, did you? Kathy probably both did. Yeah. Uh, but you guys have done a whole lot and so good. And, and it's, it's time. We want to do something that, that helps you and gives you, you know, uh, a decent facility. And, uh, and, and so that's where we're headed. Uh, Councilman Gill's questions are certainly uh, need to be answered and the discussion needs to take place. Limited discussion is never bad. So, uh, limited. Yeah, so, yeah, so, but I, I want to make, just so I'm crystal clear on this, because one of the things I was, another thing I was concerned about in terms of making sure we have, uh, we're comparing, I guess, apples to apples, if you will. When we do start the construction on the real league field, one of the things that I was told that we was going to be looking at using the existing fence or part of the existing fence that's there now to help with the exposure. And, and I'm of the mindset that. I would like to see if we're gonna make them comfortable, make sure that they're comfortable all the way around. So we use new equipment where we can, and even with the lights with Alabama, I mean, the poles with Alabama Power, I don't know how that situation will work. I understand that they agreed to do this for free for us to remove or relocate them, but I'm concerned about lighting, making sure that the lighting is gonna be appropriate. So in other words, if we got brand new lights and brand new poles on one field, and we got old poles and old lights on another field, that's not, that doesn't work. For, personally, for me, I think aesthetically it doesn't, it's not going to look well, and I think we, the kids going to deserve better. Because plus, I want to see it be a first-rate facility, period, point blank. So if we can make everything comfortable where we can, now that's the difference. If it just, we absolutely are not going to have the fun, we can't do it, this is the best we can possibly do, then that's a whole different discussion. But if we can, if we're going to do a new field, I certainly want to see our kids have the best, and I think I make this real clear from the very beginning. I did not want to see a difference between what's happening on the sports complex side, about the baseball field side, versus the MLK side. And I want to try to get rid of that whole myth of what financial is being expended on one side of the property versus what's being expended on the other. So that's where I want to make sure that we are all on the same page where that's concerned. We built over there on that other property, on that 109 acres where nothing had ever been. We're building over here on a piece of property where there has been activity over the years. 
Now, if, as far as the fencing, if you take a run of fence that runs 100 yards long, and the, the wire is, is good, you can't use the same fence post. But like the cemetery, we were approached one time that, uh, that wanted to replace all the fencing around the cemetery. And the better, the better fence there than we could go by. So we actually painted the fence black. And we put a hardener in the paint. And that paint won't ever come off of that fence. And, you know, if we used a stretch of wire, if it was suitable to use it, and we painted it, and then the remainder of what we bought, and let's say we did it in black. And the remainder of what we bought was black. It's going to match. It's going to match. Now, we even came in and put some, had to patch some sections in the cemetery fence where the holes had been cut in the fence and all that. But after we patched it and painted it back, it looked like it had been there all the time. So I think these are things that we deal with as we go through this. Uh, we certainly don't want any shiny <coughs> material in there. We want it to look be pleasing to the eye from anybody that comes because people come from all over this area to play. Montgomery is well represented. My grandchildren come up here and play in this league from Montgomery. So we're not going to put something out there in second place. But I think we look at all of it as we go. Now, uh, coach lighting, what did it cost us to light one of those uh, pods over there? <laughs> couple million dollars. Mm. It is very expensive. Mm. If I may interject real quick. Um, and I thought when I, when I started this, I, I saw the uh, midget league, I call them the midget league. I saw them practice last year a couple of times on the, on the lower field and in the holy and rolling plains of that field. And I shook my head and I said, this is ridiculous, all this land around here. And uh, I thought, a couple months ago, that uh, I could get, I got the blessing from you, Mr. Mayor, and I went to you, um, Mr. Gill, and we drove over in your car, and I told them exactly what my plans were, and uh, we started the project. We started it because not that it was going to be anything new, but it was going to be new to them and uh, better than what they had. I don't care what you all do to the field down the road when you get money, whether you put up brand new lights, put a dome there, I don't care. But right now, we're designing and we're laying out the field so that they're comfortable in knowing that their kids won't step in a rut or they won't you know, get tackled by a hole. And so that was the purpose. And if I, you know, felt like I interfered with you know your plans I, that was not my intent my intent was to help them my intent was to help because i'm a football guy it was soccer i didn't know what to do football i know what to do i rolled that thing down i know exactly how big the football field is how wide it is there's so much space over there that uh, you could have almost a field and a half and so uh, the intention was not to to lay out a brand new football field they pay, correct me if I'm wrong, probably about $1,200 a week to the school to use municipal field. That's including concessions, am I right? Somewhere around there. If we can take that away and they can put that in their budget so that they can use it for buying equipment or pads or I don't care what, that's about $7,000 that they can save by not paying the school to use that field over there. So that's the purpose of me using, going out there aggressively trying. I don't even know if the field will be ready by the time football starts. But I know that we have tried to get it going and get it up and running and, and what happens down the road is up to each one of you and how you want to, and what you want to put in, okay? I, I appreciate that coaching. Certainly my intent was technically not to slow the project down 
just to make sure that the project was, was given the attention <coughs> that I felt that it deserved from a professional standpoint. Not that we're not, I don't think we're saying two different things here. I think I just want to make sure that we're getting the type of attention for the little league, for the kids, for that field, that quite frankly, that was given to the municipal complex. And I'm, I'm not That's not, that's, you're, you're, you're totally off base. That is not the purpose of this field. field. This field is, is what they can do with it right now. If, you, if you put a hold on this, they'll be back in the rut so, and doing the same and spending money over it. But, but it's, not, all it's not my fault that it's being held up. We've had two years, and you heard the mayor say <coughs> that, we've been talking about this. So I don't see the point in rushing now. And I don't want to take it out of context, but I want to rush to get a substandard. And I'm not saying that we we're doing that, but based on what I was told, if we're using old fencing, or who's considered using old fencing, who we're considering using old lighting, then that's not what I want to see for the complex. I want it all to look the same. So unless, but maybe the issue is communication, because at the end of the day, if the league was happy with it, then okay. But from an aesthetic standpoint, from a professionalism standpoint, I want to see us put the best possible product out there, in regards to where we're building. So. You, you like Swiss? Yeah, you didn't realize that we start practice July 20th, right? Ma'am, I listen. I understand you guys have been practicing on it for a number of years, but I've also been trying to get this done for a number of years. So, if you all, as a league, will be happy with whatever direction is going in, then. I'm fine with that. The problem is, is that, and I mean no disrespect, it is not in the city's budget as of right now to buy new lights or to buy new fencing at this time. We how, start, how do you know that? <laughs> we start practice on July 20th, and if those fields are still ready, we will still practice there. But if you start construction of a totally different complex, that's brand new. These kids have nowhere to practice. I never suggested starting a totally new, so maybe there's a communication issue. I never suggested that we start a brand new complex. I'm only suggesting that what we do have, we make sure that it's done to the best professional standards that our kids and community deserve. So in terms of a new complex or anything like that, I never suggested. What I am suggesting is that we do everything we can to give the best possible product that we can, that our kids deserve and that I feel like our community deserves. That's all So I'm what's saying. your plan between now and July 20th? My plan is to try to ensure that we take the proper steps, just like if I was building a house or developing anything else, that I will make sure that I have a plan to build from and not just start building without a plan. That's, so, so, so I understand that we could have been doing what we're doing now two years ago. So to rush to do it now, I'm not We're not asking to rush. We're just asking to finish what Coach Dickerson has started. Well, we plan to do that. I'm hoping we will do that. And I'm hoping we'll do that as soon as possible. But I'm also hoping that we do it in a professional uh, manner that everybody's going to be uh, happy with. Can I speak Yes. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm Kurt Olson. I'm the president of the Youth Football and Cheerleading. And let me start off with, I'm very simple. I appreciate everything the city has done for the league. I see your vision and I, hey, I'm all for it. And anyway, myself, my board, our kids, our parents, you'd be surprised how much we can put behind an effort. What Garris is trying to say is we're a little bit late right now that we have to have somewhere to practice. And even, I've been out there myself filling in holes with sand, buckets of sand, okay? Um, we take care of what we use and we truly appreciate it. But we can do a lot with a little. And that's kind of my point. I appreciate all the help I can get. We're out right now trying to get kids scholarships so they can play. As I hate to tell a kid, no, we, we can't help you this year. And we run into that every year. And this year it seems to be more than, than in past. We've got a stack of, of papers, applications of people that need help. And when it comes right down to it, I want to help them all. I want to get every kid, because if they're with me, they're not roaming the street. I know where they are. I know what they're doing. And I know what kind of character we're building in them. That, hey, you've got a purpose. You've got somebody that cares about you. Because a lot of these kids, 
When they get that football field, that's the most attention they get. That pat on the back, hey, good job. Hey, you know, come on, let's go. That's all they get. And my bottom line is, I've got to have a place to practice. And we've done what we have for a long time. And like I say, I'm very thankful for that. But we practice four teams out there in that one baseball field and that side closest to the fence. The part that scares me is there's always been a road running through there and we have to block it off because people will just drive through there and the littlest ones are the ones that are out there in that corner. And we have to constantly police that and keep people slowed down and hey, look out for the kids. And as far as the fence goes, man, <laughs> whatever kind of fence is there that'll help protect those kids, I'm all for it. I'll go out there and paint it myself. I just appreciate all y'all do, and I'm just telling you from our standpoint, thank you, but we do have a deadline we're working with. Can, can thank I you. Before you start, I'm going to address the fact. What we're looking at is, is, is a problem we've had. Councilmember Gill mentioned that in January, or this some January 2013, when we first started, what he said about he didn't want to use the <laughs> All the fence there at the stated meeting. And we have been looking at this and going back and forth with this. And the one thing that we're trying to get straight is like, is what they're doing now, is that going to be enough? Is that all you need right now? Because we have been told before that was, it, I was one of the original ones that said, why don't we put the football field under what we've got here? We were told, no, we can't move any poles. And the problem is, it's a breakdown in communications. Is last week I have to stop, and now I was now we're moving poles. You know, so we're just I, we just want to make sure that like nobody may have spoken with, with you about you've got to have bleachers, you've got to have a fence because I believe occasionally you have some allergies <coughs> and so I appreciate so I know. <laughs> and and there's the things there that we got to make sure. If nothing else, if what we're doing is good, as if it will work for them. Right. Of course, now it won't work. I don't think there's any way that they can play the games on this year. Is it? Is that and, that, and, and that's totally, you know, that's pie in the sky as far as I'm concerned. We have a very good relationship with the high school. We help fund their program. And that is by using their field, using their concession stand. We support the high school and the band. And it's a very good relationship. There's nothing wrong with that relationship. But if we didn't have to pay that money, we could help a lot more kids. I mean, it's it's give and take. I don't want to take away from the high school. I'm still going to help Coach Perry. I, that's just, I'm going to. Because the way I see our program, our kids feed into the middle school, they feed into the high school. It all works together. We're all on the same page. We can, what we need right there is the practice area for this year. After December, if you want to shut it down and tear it up and build whatever, we're good. Do you need lights to practice? Yes, sir. We do, especially when it gets to winter time and time changes. It's dark at five o'clock. We don't start practice till five thirty because parents have to get off work and get the kids to the fields, and we have to have lights. Okay. Any other questions? It sounds to me like we need to get something where they can play, and if it's not aesthetically pleasing, we can always go back and make it aesthetically pleasing or, or match or whatever. Yeah, I'm okay with that. What I'm trying to do <laughs> that I thought was in the best interest of all citizens, I never suggested that we not have a place for you guys to practice. I never suggested that we stop, when I said stop construction, I meant stop until we get a plan to make sure we're all on the same page here of knowing what we're doing. So I didn't mean to stop the kids from practicing or any of that. So let me be real clear about that. But at the end of the day, I just simply want what's in the best interest of all the citizens here. Uh, and I'm, I'm the first to say I don't want to see us using subpar or old material if we can help it that's not aesthetically pleasing because I don't think we would have been on a new complex. I don't want to see us do it here. So I'm, I'm very clear on the record for that. <coughs> However, if the people that use it, you guys are okay with it, then hey, my argument is over. 
So, uh, but but I just simply want to make sure that we're putting a quality product out there that all the citizens of Utah will be proud of, whether their kids playing football, baseball, soccer, or whatever they do. I don't want to see a substandard product if we can if we can avoid that. Now, if there's some reason that we can't avoid it, then okay. But that's just a matter of. I believe I believe we're talking on the same page. Right. It's just we're we're looking a lot further in the future, and that we don't have to have to have a stadium there this season. That's that's doesn't have to happen. We've can, got time. Can we do this? Uh, if some of the representatives would come in and, and meet with me and Coach and Mr. Greer, and we'll, and we'll figure this thing out exactly where we are right now, where we need to get, and, and when do we need to be there? If we do that, then I, I think we can we can start this work. Okay, is that okay? Okay, we got. Can I be involved in that meeting? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think on the sunshine thing is that still serial yeah. meeting? Okay. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on into the uh, 